So when we close our eyes and imagine, focus on the flame of the candle and we take it to our third eye. Just imagine, I'm just holding a real one for all of you. And this flame, it seems as if it is one flame. But in reality, the flame is dying, being born. In reality, the flame is flickering because it is born, dies, born, dies, born, dies. But on the surface, it seems as if the flame is one. In reality, each second the flame is lighting up again and then dying, lighting up again, dying, lighting up again, dying. The same way we keep on entering into bodies and leaving into leaving the bodies. We have had in some cases thousands if not millions of deaths and lives. There are people who when they are hypnotized they could recall some of their lives as a, even as a dinosaur. <laughs> I don't know how much it is but it, how not to believe also. Yeah. There are people who remember their past lives and they have shown, they have proven it. And there were cases that I'm going to be discussing. So one of the most famous cases of past life is this lady Shanti Devi. And she was born in around 1920. Five in India, in a place around 150 kilometers from Delhi. So it was, uh, it wasn't like there was a road, etc. It was like it was five, six hours of journey. Even now, it's two and a half, three hours because the uh, it's not the distance. There is no real highway there, or rather, like the the rush is so much, the traffic is so much that it still takes around four to six hours. And even then, it used to take four to six hours by train if you want to get there. So she was born in Mathura, a city which is, uh, she was born in Delhi. And she would remember when she was, she was born in 1925, when around she was four years, still four years, she did not talk. And then she started telling everyone that her real house is in Mathura, her parents are there, her husband, whom she never named, so she never, in the Indian tradition, in the older tradition, the wife never says the husband's full name. As a mark of respect, it's an ancient uh, tradition. So there's no, it's, the, it's what used to happen that the wife would never ever say the husband's name. So she would say that my, my husband is there and, but family, she would say, we live in the fam, we live in the street, which is named after my family. And the street name is Chobe. So street is called Chobe. And in this Chobe street, we live. The family of Chobe is, but my husband's name, she would never say. So when she was six, one of her school teachers, because she was always repeating this story, got interested and she was giving so many details that the school doctor, when he heard, she said that in my last life, I had given birth and then there was a cesarean operation, etc. because I was small and I had problems in, the, in giving birth. So she explained to doctor the cesarean experience and the, the operation. So the doctor was very surprised. And then the school teacher said, okay, I'm going to risk writing a letter. Now this is 1925. Oh no, 1931 now. I will write a letter, just address it to Mr. Chobe in Chobe Street, Mathura. And Mathura is one of the holiest places in India, one of the holiest, lots of holiest places in, in India because it becomes a tourist mark. 
right when they so people are very uh, but in that place mathura is very strongly associated with the lord krishna it was supposed to be his one of the places where he lived so mathura has a lot of temples of krishna and it's a tourist trap also in that way but it's a it's a holy place and she would say that my in in one of the temples over out there of krishna the biggest one my husband's shop is in front of this so this she gives so many details that the school teacher sent a letter 1931 by post to mr chobe on on straight chobe and it reached the shopkeeper who had a build who had a shop near the temple the one of the main temples of krishna and uh, he responded yes i did have a wife who died 10 days after giving child birth on this day on in 1925 and it was they calculated one year 10 days before this had happened before this girl had been born whose name was shanti in this life and last life she was called lugdi which is also a holy name but shanti means peace send invocation of peace in this so they got a school school master got a respond responds on the on the letter and in the letter mr chobe the ex husband from previous life supposedly of this lady said yes i did have a wife who died like that and i have a brother in delhi a cousin brother you can contact and let's let him meet with her first so the cousin brother came and she immediately recognized him and there was stuff that she in relationship like she knew who what the hierarchy in the relationship etc was so the brother was then went to went to mathra immediately and said you know this is a genuine case like it is really your wife so you should go to her and 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 visit her so he was still skeptical the ex husband from uh, so he said okay i'll go but he went with their family with some of his other brothers and he when he went to their home he said he did not present himself as himself he said i am his brother his own brother just to check and this girl was always saying that my my husband has a wart on the left cheek near the ears so when he came she started to blush and she said no you you are my husband and uh, she was very surprised so then and he and she said i had hidden money in the home over out there is it still there and all that so she started and telling things about the house and their life and then he asked to be speaking with her personally and they stayed over for some few for a few days and he he said like you were suffering from uh, arthritis at that time so we could not have a close relationship do you remember how you got pregnant and she told him exactly the things that only he that only a husband and wife could know so he after this event he was 100% convinced that she is now they also started to have a uh, they started to have a battle around this girl because this family was saying that she is from she is there uh, how do like she is their daughter from previous life and he was saying she is my wife and the parents of this life they didn't want to be they so this was becoming even a legal issue and this is around 1936 now she is now so 1936 mahatma gandhi who considered that his strength in life comes from reading gita and repeatedly using the mantra of om and ram when mahatma gandhi was asked he is the national hero of our father of nation for indians when he was asked how did he manage without any violence to get the british empire and the with all its might to leave and free india he always used to say it was my faith in my om and my ram
that's and he used to read gita so gita has got gita has got a lot uh, of references to reincarnation just so that you know bible also has got but they were taken off so gita has uh, uh, references to so mahatma gandhi who got very became very excited yes if we can prove to the world that this reincarnation is happening and india had very strong even at that time two tendencies because india had a very low rate of education even now india is 35% is only educated 65% a huge mass is just farmers etc they are not educated so you have these huge pockets and when people are less educated they become very superstitious and they are exploited by everyone like all the people can be you will go you will meet indians even with uh, very rich successful and having on their fingers or on, on each finger they will be having a diff, different stone of different uh, color that this quartz and this will say, this is saving my life this is this this stone is for my luck this is to keep away death and all that and it's very very prevalent this sort of superstitiousness so people were and mahatma gandhi wanted to show to the world that india is not only superstitious but the things which are there in gita etc are real so he became he was very excited and he invited this he was he was already the national leader of india so he invited this girl to so to meet him and she stay, went over to mahatma gandhi's house mahatma means great soul that's what mahatma means he was already considered a great soul because of his lifestyle of his trust in gita and because of his non violent totally committed non violent fight the only revolution in the world which was totally non violent or rather it was the first one at that and it was basically non cooperation so there was a lot of stress but he was recognized as a great soul and he was very excited to meet this girl 11 year old girl so she went and she stayed with him and he talked with him with her and his her relatives and uh, he was already a national figure he was participating in politics so with gandhi's initiative 15 people from the very skeptical like india doesn't mean that everyone believes there are a lot of um, people who are educated so people who are educated will have the western point of view and the western point of view is that these things are impossible this is all uh, there is no way that reincarnation can be happening because we have one body we live in on this planet we have as much as enjoyment as we can do and enjoyment of course means uh, having a good time and just taking care of you so that outlook was there very strongly and all the newspaper that were published are in english and most of the people who know english have been educated and they try not to be superstitious and they superstitious and is okay fighting against superstitions is is good because it keeps you a prisoner if you say oh these stars are good this astrology i am a leo i am this etc then you what you are saying that the, all these dead stars you know, who have died like millions of years ago they control my life and whenever you start to believe in astrology like most indians do etc then the moment you read it oh yes my life had this 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 but then you can become a prisoner of it and i have met lots of astrologers etc and i haven't seen anyone who was so confident in life because they are always afraid oh this is a good period this is a bad period they are always going through up and down and they are always waiting for i even met some people who said oh i go i was able to sell my apartment i got a husband because i played the cards of the this uh, astrology but it keeps you, it makes you a prisoner i didn't see them being fearlessly reading gita having om ram or whatever you have a faith in is meant to make you fearless so that you have no fears this lecture about reincarnation the intent is that you become fearless that that is not is just an illusion i'm going to show the candle once more so the candle it seems that it is one light and when i'm showing it to you you i'll bring it to my forehead but we are all connected so in the third eye of everyone with this candle your illusions 
about death. Oh, death is final after death. The body dies, then there's no life. All these illusions are falling away. The flame seems to be one, but in reality, it is always dying and reborn, dying, reborn, dying. It is flickering. That's why the flickering effect is there. So it is being born, dying, born, dying. But it is at such a fast pace that it seems to be one. The same thing with our lives. We have had hundreds, thousands of lives. But we think, oh, we die and then nothing happens and we just go back from zero as if something can come from zero from zero we came and to zero we are going so we have we what that makes us is it makes us very afraid and it makes us very materialist i want all the money i want to have all the enjoyments i want to have all the senses uh, gratified right now as much because i only have one life and then you everyone is working on their own agenda taking care only of their bodies but the bodies are separate you my death is just going to be like you know will finish me off, so nothing will carry over, so I can do whatever I want to do, and including hurting you, because what does it matter? After, after death, there is nothing, you know, there is no final judgment, no one is going to be. So, Gandhi was very excited. This girl was born in 1925, 1931, for those who joined late, 1931. She was always telling in the school that my house is in Mathura, another city, a holy city near around five, six hour journey, 150 kilometers from Delhi. And she was always saying that my house is there, my husband is there, and my husband lives is Mr. Chobe, and we live on the street named after my family. So the school teacher got interested because she was also drawing one day and she said, where is this temple? It's very, very strange temple. And she was said, no, it's in Mathura, this is temple. And for a six year girl never to have seen, there was no internet, etc. So the school teacher got interested and then he just wrote a letter, Mr. Chaube, Chaube Street, Mathura. And he sent it and it was received by a real Mr. Chaube who did have a shop as this girl has said, near the, one of the main temples. So he got the response and moreover, in the letter it was that I have a brother Kunjimal, Kanjimal. He lives in Delhi, He should, uh, you should get in touch with him. The family meets with Mr. Kanjimal, the girl recognizes him and she, she discusses with him different things that only the previous in her, from her previous life. She had been born in 1902 and she had died in 1925. So from her previous life, whatever she remembered, she talked with him and she remembered this person. Now, this person got very excited because she discussed details which only their family knew, like where the well is there, how what they eat, etc. And she was always talking with the dialect which is from the Mathura city. So now this uh, cousin goes to Mathura and goes to the family, his uh, cousin brother, and says, your wife is really, I really believe that she's reincarnated because she knows all these things. So the brother is still skeptical. No, no, how can that be, et cetera? Because just being in India doesn't mean that you are like believing in reincarnation, et cetera. He says, no, she is there. You should come to Delhi. He comes, but he hides himself, pretends to be his own brother. He says, I'm not that person. But when the girl sees the, meets the family, she recognizes him. And she says, no, no. And the girl cannot say his name because uh, in India, the tradition is that the wife never sees the husband's name but to him she declares like your name is this this etc and then she also says that she used to tell her mom that oh my husband will be having a bot near the left ear and he will be tall and fair and not everyone in India is very it's pretty rare for an Indian to be tall and fair and she said all these things and they were matching up okay now both the family is one this girl so it's becoming a legal issue. It gets written about the, the newspapers are, and Mahatma Gandhi who trusts, believes and his force in life as per him was Gita. So when he would, when the English were fighting with him and he, he was in jail a lot of times, he was always reading Gita. And Gita is full of references of reincarnation. And the English Empire used to think, oh, Indians are like you know, non-educated and superstitious, etc. So this case, Mahatma Gandhi wanted to show that no, reincarnation is there. Our scriptures do have truth in them. So he got, and he was already a member of the parliament. 
So he got 15 members of the of, from journalists and the uh, House of Parliament, etc., and some English people also. 15 people went and with this family, they took the girl and they asked her, could you show us the, if, if we reach the railway station, do you know the way to your house? She said, yes, I do. They went with her and then throughout the way she would say, and she even met two of her relatives from previous life during, when they were going uh, from the railway station to her house. And when she entered, she knew, say, where well, there used to be a well, and there used to be a well. They had, they had covered it up with stone and all that. And then she was asking, I had left money in this pot over out here. I had hidden it over out here, and they couldn't find it. And the husband said, no, you know what, after your death. And she was angry with her husband, like, you, you had told me you're not going to marry. And also, <laughs> she had been sick. But she knew about the affair that the husband had with the nurse. Man, this is just like, you know, I, I want the enlightenment classes to be interesting. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, this, this sort of spices up the thing so that you don't go to sleep in an enlightenment uh, thing. So the husband had an affair when this poor girl was sick. I was myself because I thought that India was very traditional, but apparently he was very, he was very. Uh, uh, like he had shops, so he was rich. The poor nurse must, must have been poor or whatever. But this lady who had died knew about the affair, so the husband was even more surprised. Now, the husband is, uh, they are living, the families are living together. And one day the husband says, you know, when you, you, you died after 10 days after giving birth. She says, yeah, I remember that. So he said, how did you get pregnant? Because you had all the, these, uh, you had arthritis, etc." And she explained to him the sexual things which only a husband wife knows. So now the husband was 100% believing in her. And now comes the son also. The son is around, yeah, so she gave a birth to 19, in 1925. His name was Navneet. So he was around 11 years. And this, uh, the, the son, the mother, they are almost the same age. Because she was born around one, one year and uh, one year and around 10 days after this. So there's the only, the, the only one year difference is that she meets with the, her son, Navneet, and recognizes him immediately. So everyone is asking her, how did you recognize uh, him? Because you only met him once when he was such a child like he was just born and now he's like 11 years and you you recognized him immediately how is that and she said he's a part of my soul i don't need the body so just like that each one of us is a part of the same soul. If we were not part of the same soul, you wouldn't be trusting me and I wouldn't be able to get you to be listening to me. You have to understand, my mouth is moving and your ears are listening. But in reality, at a level of the deepest part of heart and God, it's the same. Just because we have different bodies, doesn't mean that we are not the same. At a level of spirit, we are the same. But this sameness is behind whatever separates us. What separates us is our style of thinking, our this is me, this is mine, this is I. These three words, I, me, mine. But whatever is left behind the I, me, and mine, that for you is the same, that for me is the same. So I can speak and you can listen, or you can speak and I can listen, but it is as if we are the same, in fact, not even as if we are the same organism at a level of deepest part of heart, where there is no more, oh, this is my heart, this is my energy, this is my, this is I. Beyond this I, me, mine is something that gets reincarnated again and again. And again, we'll take up another body and say, oh, this is my body, this is my life, these things are mine, this is I. But this is not the real I. So, 
there was a Swedish scientist who heard about this case and came to India to prove that this is a scam and this she just wants and they didn't make any money out of it and no one made any money out of this thing so that you know it wasn't oh we are going to now even for such people who remember uh, for Indians are considered to be holy so she did not marry also in this life She did spend a lot of ice. I remember when I was a kid, I saw a photograph of her with her husband and saying, yeah, now the previous relationship cannot be maintained and all that. But I'm, he's still my husband. So she, she did not marry in this life. So it, th this is one of the main reasons why we do not remember the past because then we are not able to live fully this life. We were not able to live the last life. So we jumped from that one. And then we landed in this body. And if you have double... People have usually anger. People are angry at their mother or father for leaving or not leaving or something like that. And then you have, instead of uh, being angry at one set of parents, then you are angry at two sets of parents. And if your husband and wife is the husband and wife are living together, then you have the husbands or the wives also. So you have two sets of parents. And if you have, uh, like, start remembering previous life, then you have two or uh, four sets of parents to get angry at. And parents are the easiest thing to be because these are the source of our life. So for anything that happens, oh, they are at fault. This is it. No, 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 no. So we have to focus on the undying part of us. Once more, the flame. You have to understand once more. The flame seems to be one, but it is dying, being born, dying, being born. Similarly, we jump on this planet and take bodies and then die and live, die and live, switching bodies. Each body has got its own stories, parents, histories. Uh, this was good, this was bad, those things. Each body has its own life story. Each body has got a mind. These things are mine. Each time that we were born, we had this thing, that thing, maybe even, maybe even like kingdoms and all this. So we had this I, me, mind had it. But behind this I, me, mind, the moment we die, we leave everything I, me, mind. And the astral body also has got a personality because it is learning. So after death, it will say, oh my God, I was so angry. For example, at these people. So I'm going to be born against uh, again as these people. And sometimes the cycle keeps on. Like if you were, let's say, 18th, 19th century, one of the persons who were out here was a slave owner. So then in the next life, the slave owner said, okay, so I traded in slaves. Now this life I'll be born as one of my own slaves. And there is a cycle sometimes of hatred till it gets resolved because this the slave who owner who hated it and then the slave person who was in his previous life slave owner hated the slave owner so you have have to go beyond i me mine and whatever you hate from this life past life and hatred will be sometimes be irrational but it will always be accompanied with with a level of discomfort because fear hatred leads to fear of the other person fear of the other person will lead you to an irritation. So you just won't be comfortable with the other person. Am I the only one who lost the connection? Me too. Yeah, we got off. Yeah, now you're back. I don't I, I do not know why this happened. So but I'll give you one I'll I'll tell you one thing, okay, and I'll share it. 
all these uh, lectures okay you sit at home and you, you, you or you can get it on youtube and this and that you do zoom and all that so this knowledge of reincarnation the intent is for you to understand reincarnation trust in it put your faith in the reincarnation of the power in you that is behind i me mind whenever you say i do this whenever you say this is me whenever you say this is mine this is something which is saying i me mind when you get go beyond the i me mind then that is the energy that never dies and that energy jumps from one another body to another depending upon what you had done so if you were as i said uh, you were a slave owner then you would be you would yourself not the universe doesn't issue all lives are a blessing even if they look like really bad it's a huge amount of it's like some lives are so bad like people who are born just in there there were people who are born just in um, not only in caves but in mines and they were they had to live and work and the only way out of the mine was committing suicide but it's a, it's the same as with us we are bound in this body that we have it's like our mind we can't be free of the body except by death so everyone has a everyone has a some limitation when we are on this planet but all these limitations are based on our understanding of i am this this is mine and this is me for me but when you go deeper into the heart there is something that doesn't differentiate it connects everyone that's the power of the heart and this power of the heart never dies and that's why mahatma gandhi wanted to free these teachings are meant to take you from wherever you are so that you become fearless why is it that people are so stingy in our world oh i want i need, need to keep this when this will happen that will happen so most of the people on the planet right now especially in north america with covid and all the stresses etc have a closed heart and cannot give and they live we live all of us live for i me mine we do very small acts for someone else very very minimum in a week maybe two hours of prayers etc we do we only live because we are conditioned in a society which is totally individualistic so capitalism is all based on oh yes you made more money you are able to make more money i respect you more how to make more money most of the time you have to do some sort of scam most of the time to make good money and our society encourages that oh this person has more money so we should respect him really really like it doesn't mean anything that the person it's like for you all it should be like oh a person has got uh, you should be looking at all the people who are not spiritual as small children so uh, most of the some, someone you can see the person as a diabetic because he cannot take sugar and ha- is accumulating chocolates and chocolates and chocolates which as it is he cannot or she cannot use on this planet because they are in this huge i me mind and it's i me mind is because of your fear of death while i'm alive i should be having this what will happen this and that you guys have got to be totally be fearless i've got millions of lives and all lives have got only one reason to serve and give love to others everything else is like going for sex money whatever do do it it doesn't matter as long as you serve the universe the universe means not living for i me mine but living for someone else you have that mission on the planet you're good you may come back to this planet you may come go back to some other planet which which is more comfortable i cannot imagine a planet which is more uh, let's say tougher than than on this but there are there are places on the this planet which is even more tougher than over out there places where they don't have any even like food and clothing etc so those are very extreme lives it's like people who go and for a sense of adventure 
or for some reason to punish themselves or as penance can take extreme lives like bungee jumping etc i would never do bungee jumping i'm scared etc i would pay someone else but there are people who are so excited about it or people you must be knowing that rockefeller son had everything on the planet like he was the son of rockefeller the richest guy on the planet so out of a sense of boredom he went to amazon uh the forest and the story is that it was only sh- sh- that he was eaten by the cannibals who were out there because he had everything on this planet so he got bored and he was looking for adventure and then the amazon said him so it's a true story so we look for comfort but our challenge is to live our life knowing fully well inside i am not this i me my i am this eternal divine flame energy when it's in the mind is clean then that flame is now visible in the heart and this flame is not a part of i me mine it's deeper and this flame is not fearful of death so you just like you we touch water and we become wet the same way each one of us is now going to be just feeling om namo shivaya and touch that golden light inside just imagine that you are touching and you will become golden and fearless immediately om namo and please you can use your finger to touch your heart you can use your finger to touch your marina also vera you like you can use your finger left finger to touch your heart your finger is going to as if getting extended your biological finger stops at the at your chest imagine that it is growing longer and reaching out to the flaming heart and your the moment beyond the i me mine the flaming heart glow golden heart is touched by your energetic extended and long finger which is reaching to the center of the heart just by touching water you become wet and get the attributes of the water which is wetness the same way touching this divine light is making you all golden fearless you do not have any more fear of the death you have the blessings of the universe these teachings of the infinity of your life are sacred teachings that is why there is always going to be some interruption because the universe does not want anyone to get these teachings just like that so you will have upheavals there will be internet outages things will differently happen something will always tell us that these teachings are reserved are meant only only very few like on this planet there are how many people around 3.5 billion people or even more i think 4 billion how many people want a spiritual power or knowledge very few 90% are religious but they are religious of a, in terms of a god that oh the god will judge us we should be living good lives the godliness inside yourself how many are interested in invoking it very few that's the way it should be because you are the selected and the chosen who are able to touch their heart and you become fearless golden light fearless golden light no more anger no more irritation because anger irritations all are born out of thinking that i am this small body i have to take care of these things i have this much amount of money this is mine all these things get washed away you are now by touching the golden heart inside yourself with your own extended energetic finger you are totally beyond all pain fear and oh namo Shiva
keep your finger touching your chest and imagining that the tip of the tip of the energy of your finger is reaching and touching your heart igniting the heart like a match ignites gunpowder gunpowder is in your heart like thousands of kilograms concentrated and then this golden light from your finger is igniting it with om namo shiva om namo this explosion om your finger touches the heart namo this explosion of clarity that you are not your body not your mind not your intellect nothing which belongs to you you really care for it you don't care for your body you don't care for your thingies you don't even care for your intellect which is just some thoughts in your head you only care for the golden light in your heart which is ignited with your finger shiva and as i say shiva you become totally golden light om namo shiva i'm going to read in sanskrit the second chapter 17th 17th verses of gita so that this feeling of being eternal becomes like tattooed in your soul so that you are forever going to be fearless the second chapter 17th line is the one that i like the most अविनाशी तु तदिद येन सर्मद तत्तम विनाशम व्ययस्य न कंशित कर्तु महर्ति व्हाट देन इज दैट व्हिच इज एवर रियल नो दैट टू बी इंडेस्ट्रक्टिबल बाय व्हिच ऑल दैट इज परवेडेड नन कैन द कॉज द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दैट the imperishable that is the true you can you read again from antavant imi yeah Sorry. focus on the vibrations that is why i'm reading in sanskrit it's my i don't i read in hindi this is like asking to read in latin so focus on the intent and then i will read अविनाशी तु तदिदि येन सर्मित ततम विनाशम व्ययस स्यासस्य न कंशित तक कर्तु महर्ति नो दैट टू बी इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल बाय व्हिच ऑल दैट इज परवेडेड नन कैन कॉज द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दैट द इम्पेरिशेबल दैट इज द ट्रू यू बिहाइंड द आई मी माइंड the next line is antavant ime deha nitya suyatsta shariram anashino pramis tasya dusyas bharat they have an end as it is said these bodies of the embodied self the self is eternal indestructible incomprehensible so when this clarity flows through me directly to your heart the intent is that from tomorrow you become totally fearless in giving love prayers whatever you can and not care about i me mine not care about i me mine but care about others in any way that you can in any way that you can it doesn't there is no you can cook for your husband wife partner you can give a smile of pure gratitude to a beggar whatever you can do you do 
but you start living for others and minimum you imagine the flame in the third eye you can also draw om over out here you can all draw the i'm going to be drawing om right now in your foreheads for everyone g malina yulia evgenia lena marina liz g just imagine in the center of your forehead your personal angel of clarity invoked by these verses we are all connected so we can reach out and you are getting tattooed again with om and this clarity is giving you the strength it's like a golden flame the flame which dies born but looks as if it is one the same as you you have had thousands at least hundreds of lives that you are you will be able to remember if you need and you just put the flame and ask the universe that do you need the clarity of your past life if you need then focus focus on to a particular time that you can think of she is 1930s again but a very difficult time for japan liz is is italian spain italian spain jean is england 18th century 18th 19th century marina also has some italy but most of it is russia ukraine russia ukraine and india russia ukraine and india this life past life Julia has got Israel in her life. Past life was Israel and fighting. Jenny also has got a soldier's life in Israel when she left and it was a man's life. Lena has got England in her back in her back. Malina definitely has room in the ancient room so she'll always be feeling uprooted but Russia also is there Russia Siberian parts most of them Siberian maybe born in Moscow but lived in Siberia parts and Julia from Vancouver again Spain Spain and Mexico so all these past lives you can see them as a film in your mind and during the time that we are doing om namo shivaya om namo shivaya whatever comes up in your thought is going to be your own personal reality that will lead you to be having faith in the teachings that we are all indestructible and reborn again and again to have different adventures of serving but once we come on the planet we start living for our own car and means of transport which is our body instead of living for others so we forget the main reason that we came on this planet that's why we keep on getting being reborn so you have to in this life just start by praying for others activating the deepest part of heart which is the golden energy of your eternal soul power in the deepest part of your heart when the mind is clear when the mind does has because of your faith in the symbol of god and the fire in the center of your forehead all your doubts are removed and then your heart opens up and you can reach to the deepest part of your heart beyond i everything that you think is i deeper part that go beyond that or deeper into it beyond me this is me this is me this is mine and beyond these things belong everything that belongs to you doesn't really it will be left on the planet all the, even your body and the other so what is yours is only that which jumps from one body to another and that golden light 
is connected to everything and everyone on the planet in the universe. You activate that tattoo with Om Namo. Golden light in your heart surrounded by blue light. Oh, flickering light like a flame. Oh, Namo Shiva. You can ask the universe, may I have proof, evidence of my past life in the next few days so that I can be sure of the fact that I am a soul energy traveling across the universe, traveling across many bodies. And this knowledge from now on will make me fearless. I will not be afraid whether I have relationships, whether I have money, whether I have this, whether I have the respect of people, whether people don't respect me, whether someone thinks that I'm good, bad. My job is to just pray for others and do anything that I can do for others. Oh, see the golden light in the deepest part of your heart and become fearless. Immediately focusing on the indestructible fire in your heart, you go beyond your smallness. Oh, I only want to live for myself, for this and that, etc. All that goes away. You're going to be living only for the benefit of others. Yourself, you're not going to care so much about it. Neither are you going to be caring, oh, what people will think about me. If you're praying for others and someone doesn't understand it, so what? If someone is with you, good. Someone is not with you, good. You have a family, good. You don't have a family, good. You have money, good. You don't have any money, good. You have success on the planet. Everyone loves you and respects you, good. You don't have anything, but you're praying in the heart. You have the total praying energy. You are a praying warrior. So by praying for all the events that you think could hurt you, but you go beyond I, me, mine. And you go to the deepest part of heart where there is no fear. Totally fearlessly you will live. Not that you won't be afraid of red light. You will follow the social conventions, but you won't have these stupid fears. Oh, I won't get children or my children won't listen to me or this money will not happen or will come back or something this, etc., or in the job, people don't respect me, or that person doesn't like me, or what will happen, and this will happen, and that will happen. Whatever will happen, you will be able to manage it with a golden heart, because a golden heart also means a smiling heart. Om Namo Shiva. Imagine in the deepest part of your heart, the flickering flame of eternity, your soul power, surrounded by blue light of the universe. Oh. Oh. You have had many lives and you don't care for the past anymore. All you care is about this life and how to help others in this life. Oh. Oh. May the teachings of the reincarnation of the soul lead you to the eternal powers of the soul inside you so that you go beyond I, your own common interests, your body. Oh, this is mine. This is not mine. I want to live for myself. You go beyond this to offer your life to everything and everyone especially to those people that hurt you in, in, in any way, financially, morally, respond, 
Anything that you think and bad can happen, you pray for that also. Oh, maybe I won't find my partner and I will be alone. Okay. I mean, if it works out, try your best. But if it doesn't work out, enjoy your life. If you get the money that you want to making, okay. If you don't get it, enjoy it. Enjoy not getting the money because the harder the life is, the more adventure it is. We came to this planet not to get a comfort. Those people who are comfortable are usually stupid. Are even at most of the time they are, if they are comfortable on this planet, means there's something deeply wrong with them. And they have done something really stupid to get that comfort. So you have to be totally adventurous souls going I beyond I, me, mine is not for everyone. These are very rarefied and very, very privileged teaching just because they are on the YouTube and on the Zoom and they're being handed out to your free. It doesn't mean anything. 99% of the people will never even be able to afford the time. They will keep on watching or TV or internet or drinking or having something, but this power of the soul deep inside your heart, it can only be achieved by your own self saying, I don't care for anything else, but the teachings of the reincarnation that set me free. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Free of all pain, fear, anger that you have in your minds. It's not in the real life. Oh no, from the past, present and future, let go of all the pain, fear, anger, judgments at others. Do whatever you can for others, that's all. Om Namah Shiva, do Om Namah Shiva as much as you can. Focus on the center of the forehead, see Om, burn the candle over out here, remove it, and then open your heart. Getting to the soul power and exploding with joy. Namo Shiva dissolving, Om Namah Shiva. Breathing in and out. Oh, Namo from the heart. Shiva Dirolo. Breathing in and out. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Each time touching the infinity, the golden energy in your in the blue part of your heart. Deepest part is the universe, the blue part. And in that universe, the single flame flickering is your eternal soul power connected to everything and everyone. Om Namo Shiva. So Om breathe in. Namo touch the flame. Shiva is send blessings to everyone. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. And that's what true healing is. Now as you do that, the golden power goes to your hands and you are all going to be trusting because as I said, becoming a healer is super easy. Your golden heart is open. That's the real energy. But you have to find someone who trusts you with their healing. So in your heart, you're going to let the other person with whom you're going to be a partner send them love and receive love. Send them love, receive love. Chi and Jean sending to each other. If, if Jania and Liz sending to each other and receiving love to each other. Lena and Malina. And there are two Julias. So each Julia is going to be sending. All you do is you do Om. Let it go to your heart. In the heart, the energy that you have taken in with Om touches the deepest part of your heart. The flame, the golden flame is activated and it lets flow, a flow of energy in your hands and you send to others in three ways. Just imagine that the other person is the golden light in the palm of your hand and you can feel the energy flowing through like this. And you offer to them this energy flowing from your golden heart and their image is in the center of your palms. Om Namo. And feel the warmth, one technique. Two, just Keep on holding your the, uh, the palms together without touching and just offer to them your Om Namo Shiva, 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 Om Namo Shiva. See them as becoming happy and smiling. Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo. And the third way is 
in the deepest part of your heart you are in the lotus of this flame lotus of this flame and you bow your head down so that you become humble and you offer your prayers as a bouquet of flowers om namo shivaya you offer you create a bouquet of om namo shivaya bow down your head and offer it to the other person om namo shivaya om namo shivaya om namo shivaya offer it to the other person and to anyone with whom you have a problem in relationship this life past life future life Om Namo Shivaya 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 Thank you Keep on working with each other for the whole week like to find 10 minutes to send love and receive love so that you have a pair someone that you can pair up with okay that's really important someone who trusts you because we in the times of covid we don't trust anyone we don't meet with the other person's eyes so we can't trust them we don't know who they are unless they have our eyes are locked up with the other person we don't trust so we don't trust and if you want to become a healer then who are you going to become working with so that is the most difficult part becoming an energy healer not a big deal just the symbol opening a heart sending love that's all but finding someone who accepts the energy flowing through you that is difficult so everyone is going to be doing that for the whole week okay any other questions you can ask questions now Arun, how come uh, somebody is born with this knowledge of past lives? Why does that happen? Most people, you have to be asking the other question: Why is it that not everyone remembers? <laughs> you already answered that. You already talked about it. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, if you really, because we we are not able to manage the relationships on the planet in this lifetime. so if the past life times came up it just says with shanti devi she was not able to marry this type she was not able to marry so we came to this planet to have fun and adventures different adventures and we choose different adventures and each soul has got a reset button so there are three levels of personality the personality is once you are born then you start hating like something or liking something so that creates your personality you like something and you hate something but everything is from the from god everything is from the god everything that happens in your life is a lesson that you asked when you when we are in the soul we write oh i don't really care for men i just want to have a child like you know i just want them for biology i don't really care they are like small kids especially in the 20th century so i don't really care for them and all that so but when it works out that in reality we start crying. no i, I can't to, to be happy till i have that other person and then that's the thing that i swear so many that because of the covid so many people who are supposed to be happily married including myself now that the covid is happening the people are not really loving the other person so all this anger gets up and now the people who everyone thinks oh they are so happy and they are lucky they have a partner and the part, partner is thinking oh my god i shouldn't drink so much because if i drink so much i'm so mad at this guy i'll just uh, in the night just cut off his throat so people are right now so many divorces are happening so many of these things so when we are not able to manage this life if we start remembering even past life also we had a death and we died of something so all that knowledge doesn't really help us the knowledge of the past life doesn't help us the knowledge that we did have past lives that helps us and all or every time if tomorrow you find out that oh your husband was your child in the previous life so how is that going to be helping you in this life be a better wife it won't so that's why some people have it in reality everyone has it if you go into but like hypnotism really doesn't because they, that leads to whatever you want to be ha- having and that's a different play because your mind creates your own personality so there are three personalities one is the personality that you make out of this this like and dislike the second is even when you die so some people will be loving oh like no one dies and you won't hear of a 
like ghost in a oh, Khrushchev car or in a small ghetto place or something like that. You won't really, because you die, okay, this is a, like a you know, limited place. It's like, I don't really care. But if you die and you were a king and you loved your castle or this, et cetera, then you become a ghost because even, even the soul has got some amount of personality. It says, I want this or I don't want this. But the ghosts are the one that don't want to cross over again, et cetera. They just say, okay. And sometimes they are mixed up because they they like the earthy thing so much that they are attached to it. So they can't get away. That's the thing. So the second personality is the personality of the soul. It's more subtle, but it can be still be there because some people, even after death, if you if someone was drinking and in some culture you put a whiskey bottle in the grave, after one hour, the taste of the whiskey will be gone. For sure. Like you take any vodka or anything and you leave it by the grave and if the person used to drink, the taste will be gone. Like it will become like undrinkable. So the point is that sometimes the souls, even, even after death, they want these things. So that also, any, any place where there is a like and dislike in your thinking, that's a personality. And the third personality is a deeper part of us that wants to be free of these small things in the life. So that is the holy part of us, the holistic part of us. And that is what connects, that is pure heart energy connecting everyone. Okay. So you focus on the third personality and focus on the heart and you focus on the fact that we are all reborn. So death is not final. Instead of, oh, okay, who was my husband in the past life? Well, even if you find out, how is that going to help you? <laughs> okay. There is a practicality to the reset button over there. Okay. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Okay. And each one of you within the next three days, just ask, don't ask me. I want to see my past life as a film or something, even though you, you, you can do it. But ask for the clarity so that you will be free in this life of any past traumas. I was once in a session and we all started to paint. I was doing a painting session and everyone started to paint like water, etc. And it was a Russian party. Um, and then uh, the last painting, everyone started to draw, like everyone was supposed to be drawing different things. Everyone was drawing water. And then the last person, he actually drew his past life trauma of uh, dying in a ship, etc. And uh, after that, he got cured of his, he had a trauma from the last. So sometimes that happens, like we got a bit traumas, et cetera, likes and dislikes from the past. So that's at a soul level, but at a deeper soul level, we are beyond the I, me, my. Okay, so it's a very, it's very complex word, but very simple approach. Just pray for everything and everyone. And except pray for all the things that you are really afraid of. Oh, maybe I'll be alone. Maybe I won't have a husband. Maybe I'll have a husband. It doesn't matter. Whatever you are afraid of, pray for it with gratitude. And then you, you will de-power that event or people or whatever has happened or can happen. And you will glide through this life, helping others more easily. Just pray for whatever your fear is. Knowing and using the golden heart the eternity, the soul power, which is eternal. Knowing that you are like a flame, by dying, born, dying, born. But it looks as if it's one flame. It's not. It's millions of flames. So the same thing with us. But we try to keep on with this personality thing, I, me, mind. We cannot change our way of thinking. And if we have the past way of thinking, then it becomes a double pressure. So just be free. Just be free. Know that you are reborn. You can have some knowledge about the past. Okay, I was over out here. I was over out here. In this session, I got this country. So you can, and something will come up. Something, the universe is very interactive. You ask that, okay, show me this and then I'll be a better person and the universe will show it. But if I just want to be curious, no, then it doesn't work out. Your curiosity is not the ruling factor in your soul, nor in the universe. Om Namo Shivai. Om Namo Shivai. I think it's around like, these the, the, the these nine o'clock. Uh, this is especially for the for a couple of people from Vancouver. But I'm glad that so others also joined in because it's always the more we get connected to others, the more we become firmly rooted. Know that I'm not 
when you become spiritual, you become slightly different in your thinking. You become less pragmatic. Uh, you do less, I mean, mind. You are less interested in thingies and money and etc. So you become slightly unpractical. And then other people don't respect that. Oh, you don't have money. You don't have a relationship. Oh, you don't have a job which pays so much, etc. Then I don't respect. Oh, you don't have a car which looks like this. Or you don't. So other people start to who are very materialistic start to respect you less because they have their own insecurity. They think that. They're very insecure. So they think if I have this clothes, then I'll be better. If I have this relationship, then I'll be more confident. And while we are all are, whether we have anything or we don't have anything, we are confident with your praying power. That, that is the key. So, but in the real world, we need the respect of others to be able to operate. If everyone doesn't respect us. So when we get into a spiritual group, we find, oh, there are other people who have the same outlook as us, who are also understanding and feeling that the material world that the world lives by is not the parameter for success or for happiness. There is a spiritual power deep inside myself. I believe it and these other people believe it. So this small group is very sort of even has got to be fanatically trusting your good and light. Fanatically. That is called faith. Whether we are achieve anything in life materially or not i do not know i'm not a guru of teaching you how to make millions or billions i'm teaching you how to feel like a million billion it's a scam i know <laughs> but <laughs> better than, better than feeling like oh i'm i'm small or something no if you meet someone who has got all the relationships etc know that their comfort is driven out of something stupid and have sympathy for them bless them may you have even 10 times or 100 times whatever you think you are in ways of when i meet someone who has got let's say a lot of success in material world or even I bless them more instead of being jealous etc but sometimes it works sometimes after some time it works but it was because the heart has got to be blessing you know if someone has got a oh look at my car it is maserati or this etc okay you if you're so if your self-esteem is so low that you need uh, some uh, some stamp thing like you know the, with a logo that this Mercedes or Maserati or Rolls Royce, this is going to make this car, this thing is giving you confidence, or this relationship is giving you confidence, or these clothes are giving you confidence. Whatever it is, it's not really yours. It's the come and go. You are just like you know you're lucky or unlucky to get it. We don't know. A lot of times we think, oh, this guy is so lucky he's with this, he's in this relationship, or we think, oh, oh this lady is so lucky she's in, and she can't sleep at night because the guy snows or something, or, or when they are alone, he puts her down. We are always living in these images. So we'll talk about that some other time, because right now I think it is time. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Tarun. If you have, don't be shy. Tarun, yeah. it's Elena. How are you? I'm good. Which Lena is this? Uh, you visit me, visited me last week, me and Jamal. Oh, okay. Hi, Lena. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lena. So, what is your question, um, Lena? Well, by the end of the day, you still want want to live the not want, but you need to live the mater material life, right? With all these scenes, with all the um, well, whatever the scams or lies. So that, does this mean that you have a double life, spiritual and the real life? So does it mean that you need to be sinful on one side at the beginning of the day and then at the end of the day you have to pray for everything that you did wrong and look for blessing? It's just so confusing because you, you still need to live in this world, right? No, no, no. But you, look, the logic that uh, most people will use is that, oh, yes, but uh, when we start to talk about spirituality, this happens a lot. And people will say, yes, but I still need money, but I still need money, but I still need money. And we are in North America. Tell me, who is dying of hunger? No one is dying of hunger. No one. And my wife gets angry, but I would say, like, I don't care. If, if, it, if it works out that I lose this money and job and etc., I'll sit on welfare and I'll get around $600 and I'll make my wants very, very small. So that's the thing that we are living beyond our means. 
Do we really need this huge house in which we are unhappy? If you have a huge house and you are happy, great. The size of the house does not matter. But what if I have ambitious? What if I want to reach more? Which will yeah, but that, the, the the ambition, yeah, the ambition should be that I want to unlock my spiritual energy so that we came to this planet. When you are dying, you have to just prioritize it. When you are dying, are you going to be caring that the house was having a red color paint or your car that you drove around was pink or, or this? These things won't matter. So you have to prioritize. And if you have lived your life for others, and you are not like a Jewish mother in the sense that, oh, only my children, my children. First you get children and you start to live for others. And at that moment, enlightenment can happen because you can start seeing everyone as your children. But if you become locked, oh, only my children, my children, then you have lost that enlightenment because you're again living for I, me, mine. So in the world of spirituality, in our spiritual world, you live and you do whatever you need to be doing. To make you want to get a house, then work your day and night, make your husband work as long as you do it honestly. I know thousands of people who somehow scammed, stole money, this and they, this tainted money. I've seen three things happen always within huge houses where the money, if you have earned the money honestly and you know, not me, not anyone, not even God. God doesn't care. No one is cursing you. Then you are okay. But if you have this huge house and you know, oh, like the, some of the Chinese community, because Canada is the one place where I have not seen a lot of people make money in Canada. I have seen people bring billionaires and then become millionaires over out here. Because Canada is a particular specific place like people are able to steal millions and they cannot go to America because America is very afraid of stolen of the money being used by the terrorists so when a millionaire goes over there they ask where did you get the money from so a lot of people Asians etc they cannot go to America and Canada is the second place and then when people come to Canada Canada will give you the right climate, will give you the heavy taxation. Canada will also like, it will be a mutually symbiosis. So Canada will, will, have, will, will exploit you and you will exploit Canada, but very few people are able to mix. So most of the people who come over out here, when they buy these houses and all that, it's okay. If you are not, if, if you are, even if you are, a, and I'll give you an extreme, even if you are a prostitute, let's say the extreme kind, but you are fully confident I don't care. I have done nothing bad. You are a prostitute. I've done it. These people wanted to use my body. I took the money and I'm using this money for my children, for myself, and I'm living a good life. My life is good. I don't judge it. It was what I could do. I had no higher education. I, I, didn't want, I did not have the skills or something to be working in an office. This is what I could do. And I live an honest life as an honest person saleswoman let's say if that person is not judging herself nothing can happen to her but if we live in a big house or a small house but we feel this money that i had this is like not really honest money then you are going to be beating yourself over it and people will be having these big houses and huge cars and it will be all out of an insecurity. Maybe this house will save me. How? Maybe this car will save me. It's just tin with some like, you know, with, with tires, rubber. How is that going to help your self-esteem? And three things that, ha that happen with wrong money, when the person feels deep inside her, inside herself that I himself, that this money is like tainted money. Three things happen. One is the kids are always going to be having difficulty. You can check it out. Anyone who has like stolen money, you go to their house, their children will be spoiled later on because that money has got its own vibration. Then it's easy come and easy go. Easy come and easy go. The person who has this money, wrong money, if that person is like the saleswoman that I told you about, 
no, I did like the huge universe is a jungle and it's, I did this and I am the tiger and I'm able to do this. I'm an honest tiger and this. If that person doesn't judge himself or herself, hurrah. That person has got that mind. You know what? I took away the rights. I cheated this one. That guy died, etc. And some other soul has placed this thing. This guy stole from me. That one thought is going to spoil the whole cake. As if you have a huge cake, but someone, some bird has dropped on it, or some person, the person whose soul is suffering because of your having more. That will that will spoil the whole taste of the cake you are having. That's the second effect. The third effect is we came to this planet to enjoy our service. The more money you have, it's good. The more temptation you're going to be having. But it's okay. It's okay. If it's honest or something, it's okay. But if it is dishonest money, then it's going to be taking you down a path where you can never become spiritual. Never. When Buddha met uh, Angulimal, like Buddha is a real historical personality about whom the Chinese who were visiting India wrote that. Uh, so it's not like the Jesus, that 12 people from one community. Buddha was written is a historical figure. A lot of whatever he told to Anand was like who had a photographic memory. So I'm not a Buddhist. So I don't sell Buddhism, but I'm telling you a story. So he, the, the, everyone said that Angulimal is a, like, you know, is a thief and he's a, and his name was Angulimal. That's because he, Anguli means finger. So he was such a, and he used to like make a statement like that. So that people would just, his name would have enough power. Why do you think that kings then would have the, their enemies on their heads on this, etc.? Because everything was a statement to make people fear so that they will follow. So everything was a statement. So they would have these extreme cases. So this guy had the fingers of all his victims and he wore them as a garland. And uh, Buddha goes on that place to meet him. And he says, you are not afraid of me? And he says, no, I'm not. Because I live honestly. I'm not afraid of you. And he says, but uh, I do this for, why do you do this, Buddhas? Why do you, you have enough money already? You have stolen enough money. And he says, I do it for my wife, for my children, etc. And he says, okay, you're doing all this and this is all like bad karma. It, these things are real. Karma is real. Like if someone was asking me, why do you get this money and this, etc. Sometimes the person has worked like all his life in the last life. And in this life, he wins a lottery. It's nothing is ever without a rational in this universe. There's always a hidden reason why, but we won't be able to see it, but there'll be a reason. So anyway, so he said, no, this is bad karma, but my wife, it's for my wife and children. He says, okay, let's go to your family. And then you can kill me if, uh, if, you, if you don't get the answer. He says, yes, they will partake of the. And when he goes, of course, the wife and the children say, we don't want your dirty money. We don't want your dirty karma rather. It's your karma. You killed. We never asked you to kill for this food, etc. So it's all these rationalizations, Lena. They start to happen in our mind. No, no, no. I still have to this, etc. Leave that. If you want to go spiritual, go like fanatic, like you know, not like this. That oh, you have to. If your husband is materialistic and you are spiritual, don't create a create a bridge of communication between yourself and him. Like think, okay, that's your path. You can manage it. You're good with it. Also, dirty money is always going to be bringing some diseases also. Diseases are a part of life, but it's going to be extreme. Like you will have diseases from the dirty money. That is their guarantee. There is a reason why people, most of the people don't steal. Let's say. It's not only that they can't, but in India, you will see so much amount of poverty, but you won't feel so unsafe as like as in Russia in 90s because everyone was saying, oh, there's not enough money, we are poor, so we are going to be robbing or killing someone. No. Whatever you have, you have to think it is enough. Thank you. You have to learn to say thank you for whatever you have and then be really on, live within honest means. Like you make $1,000, you can live in $1,000. Like nowadays, you can buy a pant for $20 also. You can buy, this, uh, buy the jeans for $200 also. You can buy the same thing. You can go to uh, Marcus Neyman and order the same $200 jeans for even a $500 or $600. It's just where you are getting the stuff from. You can go to the Chinese places where they're making it and get it for $2 also. So it's 
is the same. Like your ego is hooked up into two, 200, 500, et cetera. But just be, if you make whatever you make, honestly, live within that, within three months, you will feel a sense of being satisfied with whatever you have, whatever. And you'll feel a ramification from there that your children are getting better, your husband is smiling, the whole family environment will change. And start giving like if you know if you have if you have been able to do good business, then give some part in charity as if to compensate, and even that will pacify you. But living for yourself and all this rationalization, it doesn't lead you to to spray. It will just make you like the others on the planet. Most of the people that the other three things with the money are those things. Someone is always going to be having more money. You came to this planet to have fun. In, in having good fun relationships. Most of the people who have got dirty money, when I tell them, when was the last time that you laughed? The answer is no, I'm this busy, that busy. I'm the, the, yeah, but when was the last time that you laughed and just relaxed and had a good time? I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about drugs. I'm not having, just when did you laugh? You know, people are not able to answer. So having money as a mandate is good. But you have to say, I want to be making honest money. I'll be living within my uh, honest means. And then that will start a spiritual revolution inside. you. And if someone around you wants to live in whichever way, don't judge them. Don't judge. Them. Say, good, thank you. But you live your life in an honest manner. As honest as you can. Without this rush. No, not really. My What are my uh, my friends going to say if I drive this car, which is two years old or three years old? They don't really respect me. <laughs> how is uh, like your self-respect going to be reflected in a house or a car or some relationship or something? Then you have put the dis remote control of your happiness. You have given it off to some other thing. And the three things are one. Even if you get a new car, someone has got a better model. The next year, then the other one goes. This thing is going to get old, will have issues. And the third issue is you want a joy. The car just gives you, give you some happiness, which was very, very momentarily. Someone is saying, could we say that we are multi-dimensional beings and our goal is to find the balance in, in all realms, physical, social, and spirit. Yeah, do it, but do it, uh, uh, do it with honesty. That's all. Do whatever balance you need physical, social, if you are balanced in your spiritual world, your physical and social will follow up from that. So spiritually be in touch with your infinite power, infinite golden light in your, and then you will find that you don't need these things to be feeling, uh, sen uh, to be having confidence in life. Aris, uh, when Alexander had won over the world, he, his last place where he attacked and won was in India. So he, he, he went to one of the Indian seers, you know, that's what India is famous for. So he went to one of the seers and the seer was having nothing, nothing, zero, zero, nada, nothing. So he asked him, uh, what can I do for you? Alexander went with his retinue over out there to meet the wise man. And he just said, you are, sp you are stopping the sun from falling on to my side. Just, so just move it. That's all that I want from you. So he was uh, very like angry and uh, said, I can kill you. And he said, yeah, you can kill my body, but I'm beyond that. I'm beyond body. I'm not only my body. And you can't take anything from me. I have got everything is mine and nothing is mine. So when he said that, then Alexander talked with him separately for one hour. No one knows what was discussed, only the translator was there. But this was not noted. And when after one hour or whatever the time was, Alexander said, if I had not been Alexander, then I would be that person who has got nothing and has everything. And you know that it's a fact that when Alexander died, he was holding on to a golden coin just to show that when he dies, the coin is dropped. So nothing of his own he took with him. So do not try to rationalize, just work with your prayers. Initially, all these things are extreme, right? So just pray for the poor people whom you have hurt in any way or whatever you fear. Have. Just do Om Namo Shivaya, Om Namo Shivaya and offer from your heart blessings to whatever thought 
or people in your thoughts have hurt you. It's all in thoughts in the head. So just keep on doing Om Namah Shivaya with gratitude for the people who have hurt you or for the people who you may have hurt in some way. Just start praying and you will notice within three to four weeks, you will notice a change in your own self, a lightness. All the tainted money and all this materialistic focus, it leads to heaviness in thoughts and comparisons that someone has more and someone has less and that's a trend. It makes you very, very insecure. To become secure, just do Om Namo Shivaya for everything that makes you insecure. For the other people that you think have hurt or for the people that you may have hurt in your life. Just pray for them. Om Namah Shivaya or Our Father in Heaven. That's all. And within three weeks, you'll notice a notice. You will notice a quality difference in your style of life. That's a guarantee. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are all going to be, Lena, since you're coming for the first time, so the whole group will right now just send to you blessings from their heart and thank you for accepting them. So if or through us flows the energy that you of praying that you have requested and may it lead you to clarity where you are fearlessly living for the for others. Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo. So through everyone, it's flowing to you, flowing to you. And washing your heart of all the pain, fear, anger. And three months ago, you had a very huge fight in which you almost uh, had very dark thoughts about it. So all these your thoughts are washed out. You have a totally good bridge of love and understanding with your partner. And you are see yourself as being the best mom ever on the planet. And good, honest mo mother whose actions can be respected, justified, and copied and learned from by the children that you have. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Trust your angels. And keep heart open and smiling. Sending love to your husband, to your children, and to yourself. See yourself from tomorrow. Totally, even if you have to fake it, have full faith in your golden heart. And you, it, it is now activated. Just keep on, use it or lose it. So keep on sending love, light and laughter with prayers to everyone on the planet with gratitude for your husband, for your family, for whatever happened two and a half years ago, whatever happened three months ago, all those things and you will be fine. Om Namah Shiva. Thank you for accepting the love and praying powers and energy flowing through the group. Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, they can send me an email or ask for a separate Zoom session. Okay, Thank take care. you, Tarun.